Good morning, everyone. If everyone could, please be coming on in and finding a seat. We'll go ahead and try to get started this morning. It's good to see every one of you this beautiful Lord's Day, and especially on Mother's Day. To all you mothers who are here today, we honor you and thank you for all that you do. Thank you for choosing to be at Cedar Road this morning. We have a beautiful crowd, and again, it's just a beautiful Lord's Day, and it's good to have each and every one of you here. Our order of services this morning, our, our song leader will be Brother Larry Terman, and our first song will be number 235, number 235. Our opening prayer will be by Greg Bryant, closing prayer by Harry Smith, scripture reading will be by Joel Gann, and the Lord's table this morning uh, will be overse overseen by Kay Green. Have several sick to announce this morning. Uh, Sister Audrey Wilson is in the Andalusia Hospital at this time. Please keep her in your prayers. Sarah Noakes, the mother of Nava Harrison, continues to recover at home from hip replacement surgery. Please remember her. Please remember those who are battling cancer. These include Daryl Bozeman, Wynette Mullen, Shirley Graham, who's the sister of Sharon Dye, Patsy Green, Joe Cantor, Linda Kyle, and Susan Johns. Also remember those currently in Andalusia Manor which include Dorcas Williamson, the grandmother of Abby Thomason, Charlotte Bryant, Jimmy Lindsay, and Christine Bundrick. Also, Billy Max Wilson, who is in the Sandy Ridge Nursing Home in Milton, Florida. I have a few new announcements to pass along. Curtis Powell, this is the brother of Sonia Goblin, is in Baptist Montgomery Hospital with severe kidney issues. Please remember Curtis Powell, this is the brother of our own Sonia Goblin. Please keep him in your prayers. And also, sympathy is extended to the family of Kenny Varner. Kenny was a classmate of Larry Terman's, and I know that all of our uh, members here from Red Level knows the Varner family. His wife was Melissa Rogers Varner, and brother-in-law, um, and Jimmy Rogers, and all of that family up there in Red Level. So please remember this family. Uh, that was Kenny, Roger, Kenny Varner, who passed away last Wednesday and services were held yesterday um, here in Andalusia at Foreman. There will be a VBS planning meeting this Wednesday night, May 17th, after services in the church annex for all who plan to help with VBS in any way. If you have any questions, please see Brother Trent about that. On the long table in the foyer, there's a gray basket for registration forms for VBS. We ask all members who plan to bring your children or visitors who plan to bring children to go ahead and fill out a form for each child you plan to bring. Again, this includes visitors. There is also a basket there to place your completed form in. Again, if you have questions, please see Trent or Hazel. On the round table in the foyer, there is also a sign-up sheet for the adults to sign if you plan to attend a VBS as a teacher, as a helper, or as an attendant for the adult class. So uh, again, uh, make sure you get that filled out. We want get to get everything filled out for the kids and all those who are helping. And all of that information is on the tables in the foyer. Next Sunday, May 21st, we will honor our two graduating seniors. That's Hannah Scruggs and Megan Odom. And we will honor them at our regular monthly fellowship meal. Care group team number one will be the host team and will we'll be in charge of serving and cleaning up. Again, that's next Sunday, following our services, honoring our two seniors, Hannah Scruggs and Megan Odom. Our membership list has been updated, and copies are on the round table in the foyer for you to pick up. Since today is Mother's Day, the elders here at Cedar Grove would like to honor all mothers in the audience today with a small gift. These will be handed out by our young girls as you exit the building after today's services. Again, we thank all the mothers here today, and today... We honor each of you. Don't forget our evening services are today at 5 o'clock. Are there any more announcements to pass along at this time? All right, again, please turn in your songbook to 235 and join in our singing with Brother Larry Terman. 235, first and third stanza. Let us sing. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed redeemer. Sing over his wonderful love, proclaim. Hail him, hail him, highest archangel in glory. Strength and honor give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus 
will guard his children. In his arms he carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals, loud with hosannas ring. Jesus, Savior, reign it forever and ever. Crown him, crown him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Our next song will be 33. 33. <coughs> 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 we'll sing the first, second, and third stanza. <coughs> Let's sing. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thy glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thy glory. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for thy spirit of light who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thy glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thy glory. Revive us again. Song before prayer this morning, 664. 664. <clears throat> Sing the first and second stanza before we lead in prayer. <clears throat> Let us sing. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit all oh, what needless pain we bear all oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer let me raise that just
just a little. <clears throat> Second verse. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray together. <clears throat> our most holy and righteous Heavenly Father, we Humbly come before you this morning, thanking you for another beautiful Lord's Day. Father, we just thank you so much for your blessings, for your love for us, for all that you do for us, for us Father. We are we're grateful and, and know that we are blessed far beyond our needs. Father, we thank you so much that you love us as you do and, and that you gave us your only son, that Christ was willing to come to this earth and, and to live the life that he did and to... to set the example before us, but most of all, Father, that he was to, willing to be that one supreme sacrifice to, to be nailed to that cross and to shed his innocent blood to cover our sins, Father, that we can have the forgiveness that we need and that you will uh, bless us with, that we can have uh, eternity with you one day, Father. Father, we thank you so much for this, uh, this Lord's Day that you've blessed us with, that we can come together here to worship you. We thank you that we can gather here freely as we do. Father, we thank you for each member, for each family that is here this morning. Uh, and as we worship you, Father, we pray that you will help us to leave the, the cares and the worries of the world outside and that, you will give it, that we will give you our all in worship and that you will be pleased uh, with our worship to you this morning, Father. Father, we just thank you so much that you uh, uh, bless us with your word. Uh, we thank you for that it guides us as it does to, to build our faith and strengthen us and show us the way that we are to live each day, Father. We thank you for the promises therein and for, uh, all that, again, all that you do for us, Father. We thank you so much for uh, this country that we live in, for the privileges that we have and the freedoms that we have, Father. We just thank you that, you, uh, that we can, again, that we can worship you without being in fear of our lives and uh, being persecuted. We pray that you will continue to bless this country and keep it free. Be with our leaders and uh, that your hand will be with them and guide them in the, in the directions that we can always be a, a, a strong and free nation. Father, we ask a special prayer for, at this time for our brothers and sisters throughout the world that are worshiping you today, uh, this first day of the week, that, that we will uh, remember them in our prayers and that you will protect them and as, as many are even facing hardships in their homes to, to be able to worship you, Father, and we uh, commend them for your, their faith and that you ask you to bless them and protect them. Father, we come to you at this time asking you for a special prayer for those of our sick that have been mentioned this morning. Uh, I know there are many that are hurting and, and with ailments. Uh, we just ask that you bless them. Father, if it is your will, we ask that you heal them, uh, that you be with their caretakers and with their families. Uh, but most of all, Father, we pray that you will help us to whatever the outcome, that we accept your will and, and, and know that you know what is best. Father, we ask a special prayer for those who have lost loved ones and, and uh, be with them in this time of, of loss and sorrow and that your uh, comforting hand will be with them and, and uh, help them through these times and that they will look to you for that, that strength that they need. Father, we just pray that you will be with us as we uh, go out into the world each day, as we strive to live the life you would have us to, that we will live in such a way that we can uh, uh, show our light that, of Christ that is in us, that others can see Christ living in us, and that we'll, uh, they will want to know what we have and give us the opportunity to, to share your word with them, Father. We pray that you will help us to uh, love each other and to encourage one another 
that we will be there for one another in times of good and bad and uh, to, to know that we, uh, we need each other here just as we need you, Father. We pray that you'll help us to, uh, to love those that uh, do evil against us, that we will uh, still have the strength and the faith to pray for them as you encourage us to, that we will uh, look to those that have needs, that we will help them, Father. Uh, just help us to live the Christian life as, as Christ lived it before us and, and set the example for us. Father, we thank you so much for our young people and for uh, uh, their willingness to, to serve you, Father, for our last leaders program. We thank you for the, the teachers and the parents and the grandparents that, are, that work and encourage and pray that we as a, as a congregation and as a whole will continue to support them and, and, and that this work will continue. Uh, we ask that our young people, as they, they continue to grow, that we will set the example before them, that when they depart from us and go their way, that they will have their own faith and be strong and faithful to you, Father. We pray that you will be with each one of us as we uh, go out from day to day, that we will not allow the, the, the devil and the, the cares of the world to, to overtake us, that we will always put you first in our lives, Father, that we will uh, always know that uh, you are there for us and that you love us and care for us as you do. Father, we uh, uh, pray as we uh, gather around this table this morning that we will remember Christ and that supreme sacrifice that he made for us, uh, that we'll always be mindful of him each day that what he did for us, Father, and that it is because of his love for us, us and your love for us that uh, we have the hope that we do, Father. We just pray that you will continue to be with us as we go out from day to day. Father, we ask you to uh, forgive us when we sin and we come up short and fail you, that we that you will help us to always look to you to have the strength to get back up and, and go again. And, Father, we ask for your mercy. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. To prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper, 471. 471. Let us sing. Tis said the feast divine, the bread, the fruit of the vine, and saints commune before the shrine in the supper. cup, please raise your hand at this time one will be brought to you. Okay. Pray with me. Dear Lord, thank you for this day and all your many wonderful blessings. Thank you for blessing us with this bread, which represents your body that was hung on the cross. Please be those who have partaken this bread. Let them do it in a manner that's pleasing in your sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you for this cup which represents your blood that was shed on the cross. Please be those who have to take this cup, let them do it in a manner that's pleasing in your sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
Dear Lord, at this time, we are commanded to give back a portion, which is rightfully yours. Please let those people that give back, let them do it in a manner that's pleasing in your sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. like to take this opportunity 890 will be our song of invitation 890 <clears throat> after you have done that turn to 536 536 sing the first and third stanza before Brother Trent comes and ministers to us today. And if it's convenient for you, please stand. <clears throat> Let's sing. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget. After I wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a wonderful friend. He met the need of my heart. Shadows dispelling with joy I am telling. He made all the darkness depart. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Savior made me whole. My sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down, and glory filled my soul. will surely endure after the passing of time. I have a future in heaven for sure, there in those mansions sublime. And it's because of that wonderful day when at the cross I believe riches eternal and blessings supernal from his precious hand I receive. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me My sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down, and glory filled my soul. Morning, everyone. Such a pleasure to be here today with our brothers and sisters in Christ. If you have your bulletins inside, you should have a lineup of our summer series that we have confirmed for this summer. Now, there's two types of people in this world those who go to church on Wednesday night and those who are not. If you're in that second category, this is the time to change. We got some fantastic speakers coming on Wednesday night 
through the summer. And if you'll notice, a few of them are, uh, have been here before, but most of them are new. So it's such a great opportunity uh, to come here as we learn from other great uh, brothers in Christ that uh, are able to teach the word in spirit and in truth. If you have your hymnals, please turn to number 542. 542. We'll sing all three verses of Faith is a Victory before we dive into our lesson this morning. <clears throat> and camped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise, and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the foe in veils below, let all our strength be hurled. Faith is a victory we know that overcomes the world. Faith is a victory, faith is a victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. His banner over us is love, our sword We tread the road, the saints above, with shouts of triumph drawn. By faith they, like a whirlwind's breath, swept on o'er every field. The faith by which they conquered death is still our shining shield. Faith is a victory, faith is a victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. To him that overcomes the foe, white raiment shall be given. Before the angels he shall know his banner fast in heaven. Then onward from the hills of light our hearts with love aflame will vanquish all the hosts of night in Jesus' conquering name. Faith is a victory, faith is a victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Amen. If you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, please turn to the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus chapter 2, we will be reading from there shortly. Exodus chapter 2. Today we are going to talk about a character of the Bible. Now if we had a piece of paper, every single one of us had a piece of paper, and we were told to write 10 of the most popular people or even 20 of the most popular characters of the Bible, we would probably all have similar names on that piece of paper. Of course, maybe Jesus. Of course, maybe Moses, David, Solomon, Paul. But chances are, if you were given a piece of paper and you were told to write 20 names of people and characters from the Bible, Jochebed would not be on any of our papers. Jochebed is a very important person in the Bible, as all characters are. And we're going to look at her story this morning. In Exodus chapter 6, verse 20, it says, Now Amram took for himself Jochebed, his father's sister, as wife, and she bore him Aaron and Moses, and the years of the life of Amram was 137. And that's where we see who it is. Okay. Here's Jochebed, the mother of Moses. We all know who Moses is. 
This is his mother. Numbers 26, verse 59, one of the only, uh, one of the few times that Jochebed's name is mentioned. The name of Amram's wife was Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, who was born to Levi in Egypt. And to Amram, she bore Aaron and Moses and their sister Miriam. So now we see that there are three children, three children named. There's Aaron, Moses, and Miriam. And we will see that Miriam is the oldest, and then it is Moses, then Aaron. So let's look at Jochebed. Exodus chapter 2, verse 1. And this is the beginning of the Exodus account. And it goes on to say, And a man of the house of Levi went and took as wife a daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. So here, we know who these people are. First, a man of the house of Levi, well, his name is Amram. And the wife, who's also a daughter of Levi, is Jochebed. And that son, that beautiful child, who was hid for three months, is nonetheless Moses. Verse 3, but when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him. Thou did with asphalt and pitch. Put the child in it and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. Why did she do this? Well, we know the story. We know because Pharaoh commanded all of the newborn males to be put to death. So, she puts them in a basket. An ark of bulrushes for him, daughter with asphalt and pitch, put the child in it and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. And his sister, we know her name, Miriam, stood afar off to know what would be done to him. So she followed that basket down the river. Verse 5, then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, and her maidens walked down along the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. So she had compassion on him and said, This is the one of the Hebrews' children. Verse 7, Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go? And call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women, that she may nurse a child for you. So it appears that Miriam has been following Moses all the way up until Pharaoh's daughter finds the basket with Moses inside. And asks that very question, do you want me to call one of the Hebrew women to nurse? Verse 8, and Pharaoh's daughter said to her, go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. And the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. So here we could read it. That Jochebed got her son back, nursed the child, and then the child, Moses, became the Pharaoh's daughter's son. So she called him his name Moses, saying, because I drew him out of the water. When we look at this story, and I am probably like you, I have read this story many a times. I've seen many a movies that depict this very scene. And when I look at it, and when I reference it, and when I hear about it, I think about Moses. But today, I would like to look at Jochebed, the mother, and what we can learn from her, and what we can learn from this account. I recommend all of us to do that, especially with those stories that we've heard a million times. Maybe pick up not the main character, 
Maybe somebody that's behind the scenes or maybe somebody that's not so popular and kind of look at it from their point of view. It definitely changes the story a bit. But church, if we were going to learn one thing from Jochebed, it would be faith. And Paul knew that too. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23, known as the Hall of Fame, Hall of Faith, it says, By faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not Afraid of the king's command. They had faith in God. Here we go, all the way back to the second book of the Bible. And we see individuals going through life. We see individuals not blessed with miraculous gifts. We see individuals in the face of adversity. But they had faith. And today we are to have similar faith in God. Now today, even though I am going to focus on Jochebed, Amram is also in there. And even though we're focusing on Jochebed, the mother, and even though today's Mother's Day, all of us are to have faith. Wherever we are on life's journey, whether we're women or men, whether we're young or old, whether we were baptized yesterday or whether we were baptized 50 years ago or whether we're about to be baptized after church this morning. We're all to have faith in God. Now, a lot of times when we think about faith, we think that, oh, well, it's a blind faith and I'm just going to go through our life and hope for the best and whatever happens, happens. That's not faith. That's just luck and and hoping on happenstance. We can see. Number one, the trial of her faith. Yes, we are going to have trials in life. Maybe you're going through a trying time in your life right now. The trial of Jochebed. We see in Exodus 1.11. A major trial that she's going through. Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens. Here, the Egyptians are in control. And they notice that the Israelites, the Jews, the Hebrews, are becoming stronger and stronger. So they enslave them. And they make their work unbearable. And they even afflict them more and more. But what happened, as we see in verse 12, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. But nonetheless, they were still afflicted. This wasn't just one person. This was a whole people. Enslaved by the Egyptians. And also, it gets worse. As we see in chapter 1, verse 22, as things are getting worse and worse for Pharaoh, so he thinks, of course, what happens is that he commands the midwives to, you know, commit or go ahead and put the sons to death and leave the daughters, the Hebrew daughters, alive. But that doesn't work out. So what happens in verse 22 of chapter 1? So Pharaoh commanded all his people, saying, Every son who is born you shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. Can you imagine what is going through her mind once she, once Jochebed discovers that she is pregnant, that she pretty much has a 50% chance that the child is going to be put to death in the most terrible way manner can't imagine but her faith remained even though she was enslaved 
Even though she was under this terrible decree of Pharaoh, we remember Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23, and they were not afraid of the king's command. If we go through a trial and we are full of fear, that just makes everything a hundred times worse. But let me tell you something. If we are going through trials and we are grounded in faith and we are not afraid of what is going to happen because our faith is based on God and not of self or not of this world, it is amazing how we can face the day. So number one, we see the trial of her faith. She didn't simply have faith and everything was going hunky-dory. And that leads to number two. We see the foundation of her faith. We're going to have faith in something. But what is our foundation of our faith? What is our faith based on? It's easy to believe that Amram and Jochebed remembered the promises of God. Such as Genesis chapter 12, verse 3, when God is talking to Abraham. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Can you imagine someone being enslaved? They're the people of God. They're definitely being cursed by those who are, or they are, you know, they're being cursed by a people. They're not being blessed by the Egyptians, I can tell you that. That was a promise of God. And of course, we know the story and how it ends. But also, it says, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now, let's put our thinking caps on. Let's say that this command came into fruition and all the young boys were indeed, you know, put to death. You know, and if that decree goes on, you're only going to have women left. About one or two or three generations, they're not going to be able to have any children, so they are going to die out. That would have contradicted the promise that God made in chapter 12, verse 3. Now, of course, today, in hindsight, we see all the way from Abraham to David, all the way to how all the families of the earth are blessed through Jesus Christ. But also, Genesis chapter 15, verse 13 and 14. It says, Then he, God, said to Abram, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs. And she, she's living through that at that time. As it goes on, in a land that is not theirs and will serve them and they will afflict them 400 years and also the nation whom they serve I will judge. Afterward they shall come out with great possessions. These two promises of God, one of them, they knew a lot, they understood it a lot more. One of them, maybe not so much, but there are promises nonetheless. And they knew that it came from God. And they knew that it was going to come forth. Our, our, is our faith based on the promises of God? Because if our faith is based on the promises of God, we'll rid our mind and hearts of fear. If our faith is based on the foundation of God and his promises, then we have hope. And we can face anything. Now, of course, we might not understand what all is happening, but our faith is based on a, per, on a God who does. The foundation of her faith. Number one, we can see the trial of her faith, the foundation of her faith, and the exercise of her faith. Turn over to the New Testament, James chapter 2. James chapter 2. 
James chapter 2, verse 14. We see that, okay, she had faith and she went through a trial, yes. All right, we see that she had faith and it was based on a good foundation, but it went into fruition. She exercised her faith into action. James chapter 2, verse 14. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Our faith will lead us to doing good works. To being busy for God. You know? And that's why you can see where our faith is based on and what we have faith in by how we spend the hours of our day. You know, it goes on in verse 18. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I shall show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. It is a very scary thing to be one that has faith in God, but it is not genuine faith. Yeah, believing in God is one thing. Believing that Jesus is the Son of God is one thing, but if it is not, you know, if, if we don't go anywhere with it, where we're the same as the demons. The, de the demons and Satan know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now, do they have the same saving faith as it's talking about here in, in chapter 2 and all throughout the Bible? Of course not. But, you know, you have to think about Jochebed. And now, even though she had faith and she was going through trials... Even though she had a good foundation, she didn't sit back and think, oh my goodness, this doesn't make any sense. Why is God doing this? God is contradicting his promises. She didn't say that. She didn't sit down and think, okay, maybe I will just sit here and maybe someone's just going to come along and you know, a, a miracle is going to happen. No, she didn't say that either. She wasn't fanatic about her faith. She wasn't irrational about her faith. She put her faith into action. She hid him as long as she could. She took an ark, pitched it with asphalt, put the child in it, laid it in the reeds by the riverbank. She exercised her faith. Now, what is the response of her faith? In Acts chapter 7, verse 20, it says, At this time Moses was born and was well-pleasing to God. This is a Peter, or excuse me, this is a, a sermon given by Peter. At, the time, at this time Moses was born and was well-pleasing to God, and he was brought up in his father's house for three months. Now, there's a phrase right in the middle of that that is very interesting. And was well-pleasing to God. As we look more into that phrase, you know, we can kind of be confused because, okay, well, here, here's a, a baby. How can God be pleased with a baby? Well, that means that he had a plan for Moses. Now, we're kind of in a different situation than Moses, huh? Because here we know the before, during, and after his life. We don't know our before, during, and after our life. We don't have the prophetic word of God talking about our birth and our life and, you know, what had happened. But we will know about it one day when we are one with the Lord in heaven. 
But what I'm trying to say is that the response of her faith is that God made things happen. God will work and does work in our life. He's worked in all of our lives. Now, yes, there might be times that we can say, you know what, this is a good gift, and I thank God for it, and God was behind it, and absolutely, rightly so. But, of course, we can kind of get into a sticky situation if we go and think, okay, well, this is God, this is not God, because we're not in that same state as Jochebed and Moses. But what we do know is that God is alive. And we do know is that God is very involved with things that are going on in our life. And we do know that when we are drawing close to God, he will draw close to us, as it says in the book of James. The response of her faith is that God worked in her life. The reward of her faith The last passage of the day. If you haven't turned to any passage this morning, turn over to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. If you don't have a Bible, there might be one in front of you. If not, look over the person's shoulder and sitting in front of you or pull out your phone and get a the Bible app or something. The reward of the, our faith and the reward of her faith. Have you ever thought about our rewards as being a Christian? We think about heaven. We think about peace and, and love and comfort. We think about having a relationship with the almighty God. First Peter chapter 1, verse 6. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you in love. Church, if we have faith, and we remain faithful, even when we're grieved by various trials, as it says in verse 6, because we have a foundation of our faith, we're exercising our faith, and we know that God will respond to our faith. We're going to get that reward. And we need to greatly rejoice over it, too. You know, a lot of times we say, oh, yes, I'm rejoicing. Well, it doesn't really seem like it. A lot of times we go throughout life and we are just, it seems that we're downtrodden to be Christians. We have the greatest news that has ever been. We're bound for death, but we've been saved by Jesus Christ. There's never been a relief. There's not a relief that we could even come close to that. So we need to base our faith on God. We need to be like Jochebed. And even though we go through trials, we maintain our faith. But here's the thing. It just doesn't come out of the blue. We need to have a good foundation. We have a great number of people here that have an amazing foundation in God. And in that, we don't just hide it. We don't under, hide it under a bushel. No, we let our light shine. We exercise it. We live being a Christian Monday through Saturday, not just Sunday morning from 9.30 to 10.30 or 10.30 to 11.30 or up to 11.45 if Trent has an extra point that he wants to get across. We live out our faith. And we also remind ourselves often of the amazing, glorious, 
reward. Church, we need to put on Christ in baptism if we have not. And maybe we have put on Christ in baptism and we have lost our faith. Maybe we're struggling with certain sins. Maybe we need prayer. Whatever it may be, if you would please come forward as we stand and sing the invitation song. Why will you linger wandering from the fold of God? Hear ye not the invitation? Oh, prepare to meet thy God. Careless soul, oh, heed the warning. Are you? Remember, 5 o'clock this afternoon or this evening, we'll be back here assembling to worship. If you have nothing going on, please come back. Please come be with us and worship with us. <clears throat> if you will, turn to, let me get my notes here, 991. We'll sing the first verse of 991, and then we'll be dismissed in prayer. <clears throat> First stanza. Let's sing. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. No pain nor death can enter there. I feel like traveling on. Yes, I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling. 